Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends a very good morning good afternoon good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and uh, my good name is raghunandan sengupta from the ime department at iit kanpur in india and as you know this is the course uh, under the swam lecture series and the title is investment analysis and portfolio management uh, in the last class if you remember we were discussing about the different of the about the markowitz model and the idea that how you can minimize risk or maximize return with some constraints and the constraints were actually there are three important one one was basically the sum of the weights is one one is the weights are between 0 and 1 or otherwise depending on whether short selling is allowed and the third one in 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 the first case when you wanted to minimize the risk it was basically return of of the portfolio being greater than or equal to some r bar star p which is a fixed value depending on what the return the investor wants and in the second case of the problem uh, it was when we are trying to basically maximize the return uh, the constraint was basically the first constraint was basically related to the case when you wanted the variance of the portfolio to be less than equal to sigma square star p which is also known or given by the investor now in one of the cases where we spent a lot of time in the last uh, lecture was basically in the short selling case when you had to basically minimize the variance we saw how the lagrangian considering the lagrangian multipliers as lambda and mu we solved the problem the interesting part was that the the when you differentiate the Lagrangian multiplier with respect to w1 to wn you got a linear equation while the other two equations which you obtain when you uh, differentiate the Lagrangian multiplier with respect to lambda or mu you got basically get the redundant equations which are already there now when you solve the problem for lambda 0 mu 1 and mu 0 lambda 1 you get the two points one of them being the minimum variance point other being the other point such that it gives you an idea the how the two fund theorem can be utilized and you can delineate the whole efficient frontier now with this uh, let us continue uh, the discussions so as you know this is the investment analysis and portfolio management on the, the swam lecture series the title being introduction uh, related to investment analysis and the lecture description we will discuss in details we'll try to cover it one would be when you bring the riskless lending borrowing into the picture even though we had planned to finish it in the last class but uh, too much discussion in how you solve the problem for this for the case when you consider the lagrangian multiplier uh, took a little bit more time so i am going to discuss the riskless lending borrowing now now i did mention in the last class that riskless lending borrowing when they come into the picture it totally changes the efficient frontier how it looks like and it is very easy to understand and once you understand the riskless lending borrowing concept coming then we will consider the concept of the one fund theorem and what is the difference with respect to the two fund theorem and one fund theorem we will consider that we will also consider techniques for calculating the efficient frontier and what are the techniques there would be four main criteria one would be when short selling is allowed along with riskless lending borrowing possible the second point being short selling allowed but riskless lending borrowing not permitted and not possible the third point would be short selling disallowed not allowed along with riskless lending borrowing being possible and the final one would be short selling not allowed as well as riskless lending borrowing not allowed and later on we will consider incorporation of other constraints and the Lintner definition which will again come up when we consider a different methodology of how you solve the problems and what is the Lintner definitions I will come to that. 
now we will rehash and and, and start uh, our journey in slowly so they consider there are two efficient portfolios denoted by a and and b respectively and they are related to the two fund theorem so the word portfolio would be coming up time and again the ri the return and risk of the two portfolios are are shown which are given as so okay uh, here i would like to mention so so there is no confusion as such so i have taken of expected value of r bar r a so this is small r so whether you take capital r or small r the concept remains the same we considered the standard deviation as 10% now remember one thing when we are considering capital r the standard deviation would be respect to the capital r when we are considering the small r the standard deviation would be respect to the small r that means with uh, for the each and every financial asset we are considering the expected value of rb which is the return for portfolio b is 10% and the standard deviation is given as 5% assume the correlation coefficient between the portfolios is 0.5 plus 0.5 so what will be the efficient frontier how it would look like show it very clearly and legibly what is the risk of the efficient frontier we'll consider which has a return of 15% and can you find out the minimum variance point if you know short selling is allowed so what are the information set given information set given is that in the first case you have the return and the risk which is standard deviation for the next case again you have the return and the standard deviation as given another important fact which is given is that the correlation coefficient existing is plus 0.5 now for all the problems what was the main idea the main idea was to basically find out the weights or the number of of portfolios you will buy and here the weights would be wa and wb short selling for the first time consider short selling is not allowed even though it is mentioned short selling is allowed first case consider short selling is not allowed and then later on we'll see that when you bring short selling into the picture how it can be solved so we will use simple excel sheet to do the problem so let us uh, consider the problem in a very simplistic form so i'll, I'll discard the colors and open the excel sheet for our problem solving so i'll mark a as the portfolio b as the second one so these are portfolios remember i'll mark r a expected value i'll mark r b so let me take it to the other one shift there so i'll basically mark r b i'll have sigma a and i'll have sigma b so we will consider what these values are so this is uh, r a expected is 20% i'll just write the value without going into the percentage so but that they can be incorporated very simply so our uh, expected value is given as 20 so let me write e which is easy for us to make sense it's e e is the expected value and the standard deviation is given for the first case as 10 for the second case which is portfolio b it is given expected value 10 and 5 so it is 10 and 5 and the correlation coefficient of ab is given as plus 0.5 so let us solve the problem i'll consider the first column as wa which is the weights for portfolio a second one would be corresponding to b 
Now there are only two assets or, or two portfolios. So obviously the sum is always one whether short selling is allowed or not allowed. So let us solve it. So I consider 0. So the first one would be the if it is 0 the total weight for the second one would be 1 minus the value and let us increment these by 0 0.1. So I So, so let I, we have been able to draw the points. So, these are the combinations. So, combination 0, 1, 0 0.1, that is the weightage and we continue. Now, what is the expected value? So, expected value of the return of AB. So, that we have the formula is equal to summation of w a into return of a plus w b into return of b. So, let us do it. This is w a into return of a plus w b into return of b. So, the returns are fixed at cell b 2 and D2. So, I have all the returns for the portfolio combined portfolio A and B. So, this is the overall return. So, now let us consider the standard division which is basically the sigma value of AB. So, we need to basically uh, find out the square root, square root of w a square multiplied by sigma 1 square which is sigma a squared. So, this would be squared plus w 2 square into sigma 2 square which is the variance plus because it is uh, 2 by 2. So, the, the matrix is of size 2 cross 2. So, we will basically have the of the diagonal elements. So, we will multiply by 2, 2 into. So, first what basically the weights. So, let me bring the weights multiplied by the second weight multiplied by now the correlation coefficient will come which is 0.5 multiplied by standard division of first multiplied by the standard division of second. So, we I need to fix some of some of the values. So, A 6 is not to be done which is basically the weights which is fine B 3 which is basically uh, the the standard division of wait let me check yeah b3 is basically for portfolio a d3 is portfolio b weights are fine correlation coefficient f1 is to be fixed B3 is to be fixed, D3 is to be fixed. So, this is done. So, when I basically copy it, these are the values. So, let me check taking at and in one cell whether this is fine. So, this is fine. So, you are basically for when the weights are 50 50. So, it is 0.5 whole square into sigma 1 square which is for uh, the standard deviation square for portfolio A plus 0.5 whole square corresponding to portfolio B multiplied by standard division whole square for portfolio B plus twice into uh, the weights which is 0.5 into 0.5 into the correlation coefficient which is point plus 0.5 we have taken it multiplied by standard division of A which is 10 standard division of B which is 5. 
So, now if we need to draw, I just obviously it would not be a continuous line. So, if I have these points. So, this would give me an idea. So, I am basically marking uh, the expected value along the x axis. So, let me change it because that would not uh, give an idea that how we have been doing it. So, this comes into in x axis. So, that has to be pasted only values. This has come into the y axis that has to be pasted only the values. I take both of them. I mark. So, this is the efficient frontier as it should be. So, along the x axis you have the standard deviation, along the y axis you have the, the expected value. Now, there are two points which I should definitely do in order to make things much clear. Point one, have more number of points and also bring into the light the concept that how short selling can be considered here. I am using just simple excel sheet. So, these two rows uh, columns can be deleted. Now, let me increment it with first is more number of points is plus 0 So, these uh, there, is, there is no because once the formula has been fixed in this cell, let me mark the cells where the formulas have been fixed just for our own, own uh, satisfaction. So, now I take sigma and paste it, paste means only the values, so the, which is the x axis. I take the expected value, paste it, I take both of them, insert values the graph. So, now see the more number of points I have, better would the risk return profile look like. It looks quite nice in the sense it is the efficient frontier which we have drawn. So, the first idea which you want to, two ideas, number one how to draw it has been shown very simply in the excel sheet. The next idea is basically as we increase the number of points, it shows a very smooth line. Next comes third one is basically how you will incorporate the um, short selling concept. So, and here again I would uh, insert some rows here in order to make things fine. So, So, if I take it to a little bit more, so let us do some trial and error and I am sure we will get a good graph. So, it goes to from, from 
is uh, plus 1 to minus 1. Why I am saying plus 1 to minus 1? So, if you see the value of W A here, which I just highlight for the time being. So, this is minus 1. So, obviously, the corresponding weights have been found out. And why I say the other extreme was plus 1 is was basically this, which I also highlighting as the green one. So, when I consider the weights, So, this is one extreme, other extreme where I will consider is this one. So, the whole part at least for A is done. I start from minus 1 to 0. Let me highlight this also, but let me do it with uh, yellow. 2, 0, and then it goes to plus 1 and finally to plus 2. So, corresponding values of WA would be from plus 2 till obviously the values would be till minus 1 because the sum add, adds up to 1. So, this is done minus 1 plus 2 is basically 1 as it should be. Now, let us come back to the return and the variance. I am just copying it. The formula has not changed because the yellow one highlighted is the actual one which I am utilizing. I will double check whether the, uh, the, uh, the color one which have been done which has been copied properly. So, one extreme would be this, which is for weights of plus 2 for W A, minus 1 for W B, sum is 1. The corresponding return formula is as it should be. It gives us um, plus 2 into the weight of A minus 1 into the weight of B and we get the corresponding weight for the portfolio. This two command portfolio is 30 and the corresponding variance or the standard deviation is the formula which you have already considered. So, this is fine. So, we can double check everything is perfect. And on the other extreme, so this is done. On the other extreme, let us also highlight these, these two points just for our satisfaction when the uh, weight for A is 1, weight for B obviously will be 0 because sum is 1. Another extreme which, which is which I am just highlighting by yellow because that is where from where I copied the formula is weight of 0, uh, A is 0, weight of B is 1. So, the sum is 1 and finally, I have the case where weight A is minus 1, weight B is 2, sum is obviously plus 1 and I get all the values. So, I basically now copy the variance because that is equal to actually the x axis. I copy the expected value. that is the y axis. I take up both of them. Do not be too much bothered about the actual values. Look at the graph. So, this point which I should have ok, my just one minute. Now, this is one interesting point which I want to stress. 
because for the short selling point if I go back to the original one. So, I will just de-stress here original one was this one. and I am using the standard deviation and the variance uh, and the expected value. So, this was the values and I will just highlight with which I am utilizing to draw the light green yes. which was already done. So, I will just highlight which I did mention, but let me go back in details. So, if you see the points, so the point which is the minimum one is the min so called when short selling not allowed is the minimum variance point. Any extension of it as it goes down would be the case when you are short selling one with respect to the other, which means that you are selling A or trying to short sell A to buy more of B and considering the weight of A at that point was 0. That means, as it becomes more and more negative, you are putting more and more weights for B. So, it increases from plus 1 to 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 and so forth. If you go to the other extreme, if B was 0 and A was 1, then as B now decreases, you put more on weights on A. That means, you are interchanging the concept of short selling from in the first case, where short selling was being done for A, now it is being done for B. So, it will be just an extension one. And if you remember the dotted part of the efficient frontier, this is where the actual idea would be coming up when we draw more detailed curves, you will understand the how the short selling concept can be done. I am not going to uh, immediately go into the short selling part uh, immediately in the concept of drawing the curves, because few other concepts will be needed in order to basically make things much more clear. But we get an, a, a general idea that considering that uh, there are two portfolios, uh, which is basically the two fund theorem, we can easily delineate the curves accordingly. Another important point, which uh, is very obvious to all of you, because if you have followed the course in the other lectures carefully, that if I keep changing the, the value of correlation coefficient, not plus 5, it can be minus 0.5, it can be plus 0 0.01, it can be 1, it can be minus 1 also. In that case, you can delineate all the curves which would, would basically be inside the triangle, because that will give us an idea that how the convex property of that overall efficient frontier gives an idea that you can basically solve the problem utilizing the simple um, optimization concept, which we have been doing it in, in, the, in the, this lecture and the last lecture also. So, if we want to do it, so, let us consider few more examples. So, this can be done. So, if I have, if I change correlation coefficient to say for example, minus 0.5, the values which you will get or plus 1. So, these values will be coming out here. This part which I, I said I, I will highlight in order to lay more stress here. So, if I change correlation coefficient to say for example, minus 0 0.5 the corresponding values if you see the sigma values would be, would change so if i have different values of sigmas and core and standard and uh, expected values the curve would be coming out as it is uh, and if you remember the 
values of the the variances or the standard deviation would would give us an idea because correlation coefficient is changing it will give an idea that how the curve would look like curve means the convex set so from this and and another one if you want to find out the minimum variance point again and now i'll switch to simple mathematics so your actual formula for the variance for the portfolio was if there are two uh, funds i'll use sigma square p for the portfolio which is being formed by a and b was basically w a square sigma a square plus w b is 1 minus w a so 1 minus w b whole square into sigma b whole square plus twice into w a into 1 minus w a or oh, this should be uh, a yes, so just I, i just put the subscript wrong this is w a so 1 minus w a into rho a b into sigma a sigma b so let us go one by one and i'll put a tick mark for all those which are given w a is given because oh wa we have to find out sorry w sigma a is given sigma a is given from here 10 then sigma b is given from here 5 rho ab is given plus 0.5 sigma a sigma b already given because we have seen 10 and 5 now in this whole equation things which is not known is wa what you do is you differentiate sigma square p wa put it to zero and find out wa once wa is found out you find out 1 minus wa which is equal to wb once wa and wb is found out you plug in and obviously you follow the same rule of trying to find out the second differential and do all the checking whether there is a max maxima or a minima and once wa and wb are found out you plug in uh, uh, to find out the expected value at that point and the variance of that point which is the minimum variance point as mentioned as already explained we are we did mention that there is some concept of the risk free interest rate risk free interest rate is basically in a very simple sense is the return for which there is no variance which is technically uh, not possible because if i consider the example which i did mention if i consider the treasury bill um, uh, of the government uh, for the 91 days technically that is taken as the risk free interest rate but obviously it keeps changing but we will consider that to be fixed and if it is fixed and if it has no variance so obviously it will lie along the y axis because we are measuring the expected value along the y axis so now in the scenario a new entrant comes which is basically the risk free interest rate and risk free interest rate also can be given by the symbol of capital r suffix f f is the risk free interest rate or small r suffix f so the question is now as the new entrant comes there were already existing n number of of uh, small n number of risk uh, with risk asset risky assets with their certain standard deviation certain um, uh, expected value as the new person comes for which there is no risk now with n plus 1 number of securities now how does the efficient frontier looks like which i did mention in the last class also and today also during the in initial introduction that it will totally change the scenario how the efficient frontier looks the question we are interested in knowing immediately is how does the feasible set 
The minimum variance point and the efficient frontier looks like when we include the risk free interest rate along with these n number of risky assets. Now, let us spend some time in the diagram and it has been colored purposefully. I will come to why I have colored it. Now, initially and I will be drawing the adding some colors erasing it in order to highlight as we proceed. So, if you remember for the case when we had the total set. So, the total set I am using the light blue color was this and all the points here were feasible. I am not saying they were efficient, they were feasible. Do not uh, pay attention on the words written lending, borrowing, lending, borrowing. Let us ignore it for the time being. So, these were the points which were feasible. Considering there are n number of risky assets. I will be repeating few things, but uh, please uh, listen to it, you will understand. I am using the same concept when I uh, delineate or come to the concept of drawing the efficient frontier with n plus 1 securities with 1 being riskless. Now, we know that for the case when you have the efficient um, this we want to find out the efficient set. What we did was we considered the concept of moving vertically up because that was the concept which, which was applicable for non satiation and also moving horizontally onto the left because that was the concept where people wanted to minimize their risk. Once that was done, that means non satiation one and minimize risk because you remember risk we are measuring along the x axis. Once this is done, the graph or the frontier which is applicable is this one. So, this is the graph which we had. This point was the minimum variance point. So, our life was done. Now, we are going to use the same concept here. So, let us first erase. Now, the scenario is one extra asset is there. Now, the extra asset risk free interest rate is given at this point. So, the moment you combine any with the existing uh, overall feasible set, what you need to do is that only extend the com combinations. So, once you one you draw is basically a point Q here and why I am marking Q quite legibly, I will come to that and that is a tangent. Another point you take which is basically q 1 even though q 1 would not be utilized later on, but q would be you draw the tangents. Now, the overall feasible points has expanded in the sense if I take this hashed line this whole cone all these points which are inside this so called cone shape or the triangular shape are feasible points. Considering now you can formulate your portfolio considering n risk asset plus 1 risk free interest rate. Again we utilize the same concept non satiation we go vertically up I am not going to write it again and minimizing the risk we go left. So, if this is the point the moment we apply going up non satiation immediately it is applicable that the point or the set of points which will actually give us the efficient frontier is the line which I will now highlight using the yellow color. So, 
so this is the point so other others are applicable but they are not the efficient so the feasible set would all be the points inside this triangle minimum variance set would be the one for we we applied where the concept of uh, the uh, the variance would be as low as possible practical because we move on to the left efficient frontier is the one which we drew yellow one now why i wrote lending and borrowing i'll make it very clear if i consider the point q so what is q q is basically a conglomeration of a portfolio of n risks, risky assets now if i join q with rf which is the risk free interest rate it means that if i am at the midpoint of the straight line joining rf and q which means i am investing 50% of my money in the portfolio q and 50 of my percent of my money i am putting in the risk free interest rate which i am basically depositing in the bank and forming a fixed deposit so called fixed deposit if i invest all the points uh, all the money in at in such a way that i have invested everything and i am at point rf it means i have invested all my money 100% weight is 1 in rf which is the risk free interest rate and zero is in q which is the so called portfolio if i am at q it means i have invested all my money in q and i have not invested anything in the bank but the interesting fact is if i consider the red line which is extended actually it is it is should be broken but i just uh, highlighted in in order to make it much more more uh, visible so this red line which is borrowing here it means that i am borrowing from the bank at an interest rate and i'm investing that amount of money to find uh, buy extra amount in q which means i'm short selling so the red line basically which is a borrowing one is a concept which i'm trying to bring into the picture where short selling is allowed between the combinations of q and the risk free interest rate obviously i cannot go on to the left that means cannot go into the second quadrant because that's not allowed and st standard deviation cannot be negative but anything going in along the red line would mean that i am borrowing from the bank and i'm basically investing in q lending means i am basically utilizing that and and lending it to the bank so in that sense i have written these terms so the efficient frontier is basically the yellow one and uh, let me erase these and this q point i'll come to that again so where the at the junction where the line color changes that blue and uh, red is the point q point such that at that point i invest again i am repeating 100% in q 0% in rf and if i have the rf which i have marked here i invest 100% in rf 0% in q and this q one i just do it in order to make things clear for this case now this q point will be important which i did mention and and this is how so this is the same graph done a little bit differently this is the q point which has the return as r bar q standard deviation of sigma q and f is the risk free interest point with the return of rf and standard deviation of 0 now this is the one fund theorem which means that if there is only one fund in the market and the bank all the people who are willing to invest and basically be on the efficient frontier you don't need anything you just need to basically invest some portion in the bank and some portion in q or borrow from the bank and utilize that in trying to buy extra for the this q which means i'll go into the short selling concept as already mentioned then this being a straight line it will give a lot of information how we can basically simply use geometry in order to basically have an understanding how the best points can be found out so this one fund theorem says there is a single fund q of risky asset n number of risky assets such that any efficient portfolio can be constructed as a combination of the fund q and the risk free interest rate f with a uh, return of q 
capital R suffix f or small r suffix f. So, now let us consider this uh, problem and, and by the way this uh, RF would be coming up in different ways when we solve different type of problems uh, in considering both the concept of short selling and short, not short selling being there. We will come to that later on. The correlation coefficient existing between A and B is plus 0.1 and their returns and standard deviations are given. So, this is the standard deviation for A and B 10 and 18 and returns are given as 15 and 30. So, I am not going to the percentage, I am just taking the values. The proportion of A and B that define a portfolio consisting of A and B only having the minimum standard deviation, it can be found out. So, we already know as per the formula, let me use a different color so it will be able to highlight. So, sigma square P for the portfolio which is A and B, I have again this I am again writing it. So, because this is a different problem, I just let me write the first part W A square into sigma A square plus 1 minus W A whole square into sigma B whole square plus the of the diagonal element 2 W A 1 minus W A rho A B which is the correlation coefficient which is given as plus 0.1 into sigma a into sigma b. Everything is known which which is not known I will I'll just circle it in green is basically w a. So, what I do is that I again differentiate it put it to 0, second differentiate it check it the minimum and the maximum concept and solve the problem. put to 0 and then second differentiate and check whether greater than 0 or less than 0. So, what is the minimum? Okay, once what is the second question says what is the value of the minimum standard division for the portfolio? So, one once W is found out, so that would basically be the I am using different color for the second bullet point problem. So, this would be W A star, star being the minimum variance point, you will basically also have W B star, plug them in the values and find out. So, what you need to find out is that even though that is not needed, but still I am calculating would be W A star multiplied by the return A bar which is given plus, so this is summation. So, I would do it uh, sum it up. W B star R B bar. So, I do I know R A and R B? Yes, I know. So, this is known, this is known from here and W A and W B have been found out from the first problem and we solve the second case which is the return for the minimum variance point. Now, the question would be how do we find out the standard deviation, the standard deviation already had been found this when we partial differentiate it, not partial differentiate it is differentiate it and find out W A star and W B star, plug in the formula of sigma square p and solve it. Third point is what is the corresponding mean return of the portfolio thus formed? So, we have solved all the three parts of the problem and, and if you want to solve it the same excel sheet concept can be utilized. So, here it says take two scripts of Tata Steel and, and State Bank of India from NSC for the time period given as uh, January 2015 to 31st December 2015 using the end of the day price find out the returns small r using these two information find out that for Tata Steel and, and SEBI which will define a portfolio having the minimum deviation. So, we will uh, also and, and how we we utilize that data, I will come to that later on. The second question is what is the value of the minimum standard deviation for the portfolio formed, which again you can utilize the same concept what we did in, in, in slide number 10 and what is the corresponding mean return of the portfolio thus formed at the minimum standard point can also be found out. Only important fact part which I am for the time being not going to the details is to find out the returns are because when we come into the concepts 
which will be very shortly, uh, we use the concepts of uh, the log return and we find out the return by utilizing the formula of ln of p2 by p1, where p2 is the price for day 2, p1 is the price for day 1 and we always will use the closing price because closing price will give us all the information for the price fluctuation for any particular stock throughout the day. There are three assets which is given which is uh, with the covariances. I am taking very simple example with the covariances as and variance covariances as given which I am just highlighting in the blue with the blue marker. The returns are given 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, find on the minimum variance point. Again, in the same formula, uh, if you want to find out the minimum variance point, then what would be required would be this. So, in the formula which you have, so if you remember the first problem which we solved, lambda 0, mu 1, mu 0, lambda 1. This was basically using the Lagrangian L function and when we solved it. So, you will just utilize the same concept to solve the problems accordingly. Find another efficient point. So, these are what it means here. These two points are basically corresponding to the case of lambda 0 mu 1 mu 0 lambda 1 and basically delineate both the points. It says draw the efficient frontier considering the correlation be existing between these so called two portfolios formed is plus 0.5. We have already done it, combine them. We did it for 2. You can basically, 2 is basically these two points which n been found. So, it is a basically two stage problem, not in the time frame perspective. Two stage is basically when you find out the minimum variance point, find out any other portfolio once those. Uh, x and y has been formed where x consists of, of asset 1, 2, 3, y consists of asset 1, 2, 3 and then you proceed to find out the efficient frontier considering the correlation coefficient existing between x and y as plus 0.5. Is risk free rate is given as 0.2 find out the efficient frontier. So, once you find out the, the second point or, or the other efficient portfolio which have already formed which technically would be q join the tangent or join the point with that q with the risk free interest rate 0 0.2 and that will immediately give you the efficient frontier. It says that find the efficient frontier of a portfolio for the risky assets if risk, uh, risk free interest rate is given uh, and draw the efficient frontier. So, once you find out the efficient portfolio of risky assets, you just join them and complete the problem. So, this basically consists of all the three concepts. Point one, considering that uh, Lagrangian concept is utilized to find out uh, both the minimum variance point and the other point. Once the other point is found out, uh, obviously you need to find out the weights and then only proceed. Uh, once the other point is found out, you join it with the risk free interest rate and then this gives you the efficient frontier. So, this is the concept which we did is ex just ex exactly the being extended in this in the problem which is being discussed in slide number 13. There are three scripts Reliance, ONGC, SBI from NSC from date of 1 1 2016, January 2016 to 31st uh, December 2016. Utilizing this, you find out the return which is smaller, then find out the minimum variance point in the same way. Uh, minimum variance point would be found out. Considering three assets, you will utilize Lagrangian, find out lambda 0 mu 1, mu 0 lambda 1, find out the efficient portfolio, other efficient portfolio you find out which is Q. Draw the efficient frontier considering correlation coefficient is calculated as it is. So, you can utilize the, the concepts of the correlation coefficient existing between uh, taking two at a time and then draw it and then basically be able to delineate the whole thing. You take the risk free, uh, value of risk free interest rate based on the treasury bill for that period of time which is uh, 2016, find an average value and then draw the last straight line joining that point Q which is that efficient portfolio not the minimum variance point with the risk free interest rate and you get the whole efficient front frontier.
Now we will consider, I will give a background even though it will take time in, in we will try to cover it in the next, next class, we will give a background. So, we will consider the techniques of finding out the efficient frontier taking four important cases. Point one, short selling allowed, distress lending borrowing possible. Second one, short selling allowed, but distress lending borrowing not permitted. Third point is short selling disallowed along with distress lending borrowing possible. And finally, both of them are not allowed. And we will try to incorporate some other constraints for which the Lintner's definition would be important, it will be coming up later on. Now, if you if you if you uh, um, uh, analyze the whole problem which we discussed for the last two classes were this, the idea was this, either you maximize the return, minimize the risk, when you maximize the return, the constraints are weights is 1, weights uh, plus summation is 1, weights can be between 0 and 1 or they can be negative also and greater than 1 depending on short selling is allowed for the later case. And if as if the optimization problem is minimizing the risk, there would be a constraint corresponding to the return also. In case 2, we maximize the return, the constraints are with respect to risk, with respect to some of the weights is 1 and with respect to the case where the weights can be between 0 and 1 or weights can be negative or greater than 1 in the, the last case where short selling is allowed. Once you uh, have and, and we saw the problem, we basically uh, highlighted the Lagrangian one. Why I highlighted the Lagrangian one that will be coming up later on also and, and why I am in repeating the same points we have considered would basically make sense when we solve or try to have an idea of how we solve the problems. The other case was, was in once we have solved this problem for the Lagrangian, you can find out the minimum variance point and other point which is basically Q and using the uh, two fund theorem, you can delineate the whole efficient frontier. Later on when we brought into the picture uh, uh, nth plus 1 element which is the risk free interest rate which was along the y axis, we easily saw that how simple the efficient frontier looks like. And once the efficient frontier is there along with q, you can extend it to basically consider the lending and borrowing concept. And uh, having said that, these two pictures would give us all the idea we need to discuss about short selling being there, riskless lending bearing, bearing being there and any combination otherwise. So, with this I will close this class and consider all these techniques in detail in the next class which will be the 8th one. Thank you very much and have a nice day.